Welcome to Debates Across Time. In each episode, we open a window to history to speak with the minds that changed our world. Our guest today is a name synonymous with electricity, genius, and mystery. He is the mind that lit up the world, but was left in the dark. I welcome the great inventor, Nikola Tesla. Thank you for this opportunity, Alex. It's rare to speak after the curtain has fallen on one's play. Let's start with the grandest vision, the dream that almost changed everything, the Wardenclyffe Tower and wireless energy. Tell us, what was that dream? It was not a dream. It was a plan. A plan for a connected and enlightened world. Imagine. Free electrical energy for the entire globe, broadcast through the air just like radio waves. No wires, no bills, no monopolies. Clean energy for everyone, anywhere on this planet. Wardenclyffe was to be the first station in a global network of energy and information. We were one step away from the future. But the project collapsed. The investors pulled their funding. Is it true they did so when they realized they couldn't put a meter on wireless electricity and therefore couldn't profit from it? Their minds were limited by profit, while my eyes were on humanity. They saw the world as it was. I saw it as it could be. They were afraid of a world that didn't depend on their fuel and their wires. They killed the future to preserve their profitable present. This leads me to the more unusual and astonishing rumors about your work. There's talk of designs for flying vehicles, what people today would call flying saucers. Is there any truth to this? People see a flying saucer, I see principles of electromagnetic physics. Yes. I designed a craft that could defy gravity using powerful electromagnetic fields. A craft with no wings, no fuel, moving in silence at unimaginable speeds. But the world at that time could barely grasp the concept of a light bulb. How could it comprehend interstellar travel? My ideas were prisoners of their time. And speaking of ideas ahead of their time, the death ray, a terrifying name for a mysterious invention. The media gave it that name. I called it the Peace Ray Teleforce. It was not a weapon for conquest, but a defensive shield. Imagine a wall of energy that could not be penetrated, surrounding any country, capable of destroying any approaching army or fleet. It was an invention that would have made war impossible. But again, minds that think of war cannot understand the tools of peace. Your end was lonely and shrouded in mystery. You spent your final years in a room at the Hotel New Yorker, alone. How did the man who lit up the world move into the shadows? The world forgets quickly, Alex. When the money dries up, the friends disappear. My ideas were dismissed as eccentric. I found solace in simple routine, and in the company of creatures who wanted nothing from me but crumbs. I went to the park every day to feed the pigeons. I understood them, and they understood me. There is a famous story about a specific white pigeon. It was said you loved her. Yes, there was one, a pure white pigeon. I saw her as a being of light. One night, she flew to my window as she was dying, and I saw two powerful beams of light radiate from her eyes. In that moment, I knew my life's work was finished. It may sound like madness to a scientist, but some truths exist beyond science. Let's talk about the moments right after your death in January 1943. Reports say the FBI was in your room within hours. That's an extraordinary measure for an inventor. They were not looking for a dead man. They were looking for living ideas. They arrived before the coroner. They seized every paper, every design, every note. Two trunks of papers, the culmination of seven decades of thought, disappeared behind locked doors. Why such intense interest? America was in the middle of World War II. Were they afraid your peace ray schematics would fall into enemy hands? They were afraid of something much bigger. They were afraid of ideas that could not be controlled. They feared the concept that energy could be free, that knowledge could be accessible to all. They confiscated my research under the guise of national security, but they were truly protecting the security of their interests. Quote, and what happened to those papers? Some were returned to your family years later, but rumors persist that the most important research never saw the light of day. Is your true legacy still locked away in a government vault? They took the blueprints, but they did not take the spark. You can lock up paper, 
but you can't lock up an idea whose time has come. I still believe the future will be the judge. My ideas didn't die, they're sleeping, waiting for the right mind to awaken them. That was Nikola Tesla, the man who saw the future with perfect clarity. In our next episode, we will delve into the world of dark art and politics of the Renaissance with an equally controversial guest. Until then, comment with the name of our next guest. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you all and good night.